Oil prices plummet. Stock prices plunge. And economies around the world are paralyzed. The impact of the global pandemic, COVID-19. In this edition of Exploring COVID-19, we look at the impact of the coronavirus on the Jamaican economy and the hotel industry in Kingston. The core economies in Jamaica, we can break them down into two major sectors, services and goods producing sectors. And as we know, the servicing sector is a huge component of that is tourism. Right? And then we have our restaurants and bars and all these other services, financial services. Right? And we also, the wholesale, the retail, all of those services. Because remember, one of the things about services is that they're high contact. A lot of person-to-person -person interaction happens. And then we have the goods producing, so agriculture, mining, manufacturing, and construction. Those are the goods producing sectors. Now, when we look at COVID-19 and how that virus is transmitted, we know right away that the direct impact will be in the services sector because the mode of transmission right, is um, close contact with another person. And this is where we found that tourism, such to, the, the impact was so intense and severe on tourism, on the tourism sector. And as a result of that, all the other industries that are part of that sector, or interact with tourism sector, were impacted. So you look at a hotel that is a major player in the tourism sector and because of the lockdown and the physical distancing there was no business happening. So when you think about now agriculture and all the farmers who would then be supplying produce to that hotel they are immediately impacted because they would have been preparing to sell to their client and so they will now have all of this excess. And the good thing is that the government did put something in place to try and help them to get rid of some of that um, excess to the local population. Because other than that, we would have had significant wastage. And we see that even in the poultry industry, we saw in the egg industry also where there was a lot of excess capacity. And the idea was to try and get rid of it as quickly as possible before it began to spoil because we don't have adequate storage. And so the impact of COVID was direct in some instances and then indirect because of the fallout from the other sectors that are linked to the tourism industry. Uh, when we look at retail and wholesale, again, high contact areas, right? And because the government had to make a decision to partially shut down the economy in order to reduce the transmission of the virus, all those sectors were negatively impacted. The other thing we look at is that when you look at the fact that many persons who work and earn from these sectors were not earning or earning significantly less, then the impact is evident. So the, re the retail and the wholesales are then impacted um, indirectly because of the impact on, of, on demand. When we look at the transportation sector, many of them directly linked to tourism. So that was a direct hit for many of those um, in that sector. And then again, when you look at the local population and the fact that we had social distancing and staying at home, the transportation sector got hit significantly. So when you look at it in a nutshell, it's a domino effect because you get the direct hit because of the, 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 the protocols that had to be put in place in order to protect us from the transmission of this virus. And then out of that, we then got the economic impact that was then um, affecting everybody else. Globally, um, you know, economies have taken a significant hit from, the, from this virus. Uh, we declined 5% in the first quarter. The projection is 14% because if you remember, when it started, mid-March is when we really started taking action and that is when we really started to see the impact. But um, the major part of the impact came up until in, we're now in the second quarter. So this is when we're going to see the most significant decline of between 12 and 14% proje as projected. You will also find that um, 
in any economy and in any recession, that there are companies that, because of the elasticity of the products, in other words, when there's an economic downturn, there's not significant decline in demand. So things such as food, staples, you will not see significant decline. You may see a little bit of decline because, of course, um, consumers are a little bit more careful about how they spend. So the luxuries, you know, things like maybe ice cream and all that, they probably wouldn't purchase, but basic food items they would purchase. So those, those um, and the medicines, so those tend not to be too badly impacted, but everything else that we would purchase uh, other than you need for basically daily living would be impacted. One of the things we know coming out of this recession, the big thing is going to be consumer confidence. How confident do I feel about going somewhere and being safe that um, this virus will not be transmitted? So in, in, in opening up, we have to instill that confidence that we are ready for business, but you will also be protected. So this is going to be an additional cost for business, for the hotels and those in, those in, the, in the industry. But it is a cost that we have to bear because we can't sit back and not rebuild an industry. Meetings, incentives, conferences and exhibitions, MICE, is a type of tourism in which large groups, usually planned well in advance, are brought together. The Medallion Hall sits on a little over one acre of land. It has 14 conference rooms and 25 bedrooms. It also operates under the MICE business model. We spoke with Glenn Bloomfield, chairman of Medallion Hall, to better understand how this sector has been impacted. Kingston is more so of a business type hotel. The hotels are, that are in Kingston are business, more so business. Yes, we have bedrooms, but we have conferencing. Before the, the problem that we have in this, this, this whole problem of COVID, we were one of the conferencing people who used to have a lot of conferencing and conferencing and conferencing and conferencing, daily conference. Car park were one of the problems that uh, <clears throat> we were facing. Some of us were facing then. Um, the COVID-19 has knocked that out. And there, it seems to me, for Kingston hotels, including the Medallion Hall, we have to take a, a different look at how we are approaching the, 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 what we have. Um, the service that we are going to look at, because you have the, the, the online teleconferencing, that is now being in the marketplace. You hear that being marketing across the entire, and therefore people are going to be at their home or at their offices, and, and they are going to have the dictator. My wife have a way of sitting down um, at night and say that she's doing a conference at church. She has a meeting at church, and we are going to church in the living room to, to do that kind of discussion at, at a church level. So we now have to plan differently. They're going to, there has to be a new beginning, a new thinking on it, our operation, a new pricing of our, our, our goods and services. We have to look at how best we, we, we divide. Our, for example, we have a room now, a conference room that can hold 300 people, and we have 200 people, we have 80 people, we have 40 people, we have steam room. We have various different type of rooms. But the, the hotel in, in, hotels in Kingston, we, 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 are, we are facing a very, very tough time now in terms of how to handle the whole ex experience. Um, I believe Jamaica will experience some support, some help. People will relax a little and be more comfortable when we stop wearing the mask. And of course, that is a condition. Whenever people are not wearing any mask anymore, that is the time you're going to hear about the economy start growing. And, and when there's a vaccine, as far as Medallion Hall is concerned, we now have to get out there. And we, our staff, we have just a skeleton staff to answer telephones, keep the light burning. We have our security enforce. We just keep afloat in terms of 
keeping certain members of staff because the light must be on. But oh, we have been greatly hit. There's no question about that. Yes, millions have been lost in terms of, um, of, of what we would have earned within then and now. We have, we have the workers now. This is where we had our workers. We have laid them off for a month. We can't keep them out of without some kind of under payment, some kind of understanding, some kind of understanding of how well we are going to restart. That we, we are faced with that kind of um, that kind of, of financial problem as we stand, as we speak. We have people who serve us for 32 years, 25 years, and many years. We have we don't have we don't have a trade union here at Medallion Hall. Never. Never. We have staff who they migrated and they back here and they are here with us. So we have to be mindful of their presence. We have to be careful that now how are we going to ensure that their kids are back to school? How we are going to ensure that their light bills are paid? How we're going to ensure that the car bills are paid, how we're going to ensure that they live. That is the problem that is we are now faced with. And we have to face that music, they would say. It has to be faced and faced with some understanding of people's interests. The hurricane season brings with it its own share of difficulties. Between 2016 and 2019, there were 65 named storms, 31 hurricanes, and 15 major hurricanes. The cost, billions. One of the things we need to look at is the fact that we have to admit that COVID-19 has weakened our economy. We see it in the numbers. 5% um, decline in first quarter, projected 14% in the second quarter, going into a hurricane season. So the economy is weakened. But it does not mean that we do not prepare as we normally would for a hurricane because we still have to make the preparation. Because if we don't, then it will be, the impact will be even more significant. And I'm speaking about financial-wise because of the potential damage. So again, it comes back to, because basically what we're faced with are two, what we call systemic risk. Risk that cannot be avoided by any sector or industry um, sort of thing. So we have to prepare for it. We are coming out of COVID, we hope. And so in this hurricane season, again, what businesses need to do and what we need to do as a nation is to prepare, as we have always done. Look at what exposures you may possibly have, right? So the building. First thing, whether it's your building or you're renting, make sure that the building adheres to the building codes, right? Because we know hurricanes, that's a big factor for us, so you do that. Then you look around for hazards within your environment, you know, so electricals, make sure the building has been properly wired and certified. Uh, you look, you make sure that if customers and employees, your environment is safe, because what you're trying to do is to prevent losses that might occur from accidents and injuries within your establishment. So you put those loss control measures in place. Proper inventory management is also a loss control measure. You reduce pilfering, you reduce um, the chance that you may spoil because of expiration. So you look at those risks, the property risks, the liability exposures that might be there and you can put measures in place to reduce the loss. And also, if you put measures in place, um, insurance becomes a little bit less expensive. COVID-19 has disrupted the way we conduct our financial affairs. But as a people, we are resilient. This has been Surviving COVID-19.